Question number 36, this is the first of the three case study questions. There are two one mark questions and a two mark question to each case study. Let us get started. This question basically is from the topic coordinate geometry. This is an interesting read. If you have not read it already, pause the video and read it slowly and then come into the video. I am going to proceed to the next slide. Right? The next slide basically talks about how these patterns could be. Some of these are hexagon, octagon, squares, triangles and all of those. Right? So, have this perspective in mind. Now, we are talking about a craftsman who basically took this pattern and has pl plotted it on a Cartesian plane, XY plane, that is what it is. Right? So, let us look at how his tessellation pattern is looking. Right? This is his tessellation pattern right? and they have essentially given names to each of these things. W, X, V, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H right? and then it starts from here I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W. So, these are all the points that he has marked on it and the coordinates are given. This is the place where the x axis and y axis meet. So, this is essentially 0. So, we can look at the coordinates of each of these points with respect to this. Let us answer the four questions based on this information. I am going to have this particular graph sheet with this tessellation pattern available for each of the questions that we are going to be solving. Start with the first of the questions. So, this is use the above figure to answer the questions that follow. We'll dive into this question directly. The first question is what is the length of the line segment joining points B and F? Right? This is point B, this is point F. Let's quickly note down the coordinates of point B. Point B, this is 0, the origin. In the x direction, we are moving 1 unit and in the y direction, we have moved 2 units. So, the coordinates of point B are 1, 2. We will have to find out the length of the line segment joining BF, coordinates of point F. Right, we will look at it, this is 0, minus 1, minus 2, this is where f is on the x axis, minus 2, comma, and on the y coordinate is equal to 9. So, we will have to find out the length of the line segment joining the points whose coordinates are 1, comma, 2 and minus 2, comma, 9. We know the length of the line segment joining these two points BF, if this is x1, y1, x2, y2, then BF will be equal to square root of x2 minus x1, the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. So, in this particular case x2 minus x1 is essentially minus 2 minus 1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 is 9 minus 2 the whole square. Minus 2 minus 1 is a minus 3, minus 3 square is equal to 9. 9 minus 2 is a 7, 7 square is a 49, square root of 9 plus 49 which is equal to root 58. So, length of the line segment joining these two points B and F is equal to root 58. Move on to part 2. The center Z of the figure will be the point of intersection of the diagonals of the quadrilateral WXOP. WXOP. Let us join this, right? WXOP. What we actually get in this shape is essentially a rectangle. In a rectangle, diagonals bisect each other. So, essentially, they are saying that the z, the center of this figure, is at the point of intersection of the diagonals. One of the diagonals is going to be WO is a diagonal. One diagonal, we will write the diagonals. Diagonals are essentially WO and WO and XP are the two diagonals that we have. Diagonals bisect each other. So, this coordinates of this point z is the intersection point of these two, which is the point at which these diagonals get bisected, which means its z coordinate is the midpoint of wo or the midpoint of xp, both of which are going to be the same value. So, midpoint formula for us is equal to x1 plus x2 by 2, comma y1 plus y2 by 2. All we need to do is pick the coordinates of w and o or x and p. I am going to pick the coordinates of w and o. Let us pick the coordinates of w. w, the coordinates are basically minus 6 on the x axis, 2 on the y axis. So, minus 6, 2 are the coordinates of w and then we need the coordinates of o. o coordinates are basically on the x axis, if you look at it, it is a 4 and y axis, it is a 9. So, 4, 9 is what we have. Now, quickly check it out, it is w and o, w the coordinates are basically minus 6 and 2. For O, the coordinates are basically 4, sorry, O it is 5 and 9, right? 5 and 9, right? We made a mistake, so it is 5 and 9. 
So x1 plus x2 by 2 is minus 6 plus 5 divided by 2, comma 2 plus 9 divided by 2. So the coordinates of point z are essentially minus 1 by 2, comma 11 by 2. Right? So these are the coordinates of point z, essentially the midpoint of wo and xp. Third one, this has got internal choice. So you can solve either this part or the next part. We're going to have solution for both right away. What are the coordinates of the point on y-axis? The point on y-axis that is equidistant from A and G. That point is going to be somewhere here. Let's say I don't know where it is. So from G to this point and from A to this point, it essentially is the same distance as what we have. So let's call this point to be equal to, we have a P somewhere here, so we'll use something else. We'll use this point as Y, because we have till X, we'll go to Y, right? So essentially, they are saying GY is equal to AY, right? It's equidistant from both A and G. If it is equidistant, then essentially GY square is going to be equal to AY square. Now, what do we know about Y? Y is on the, Y is a point on the Y axis. On the y-axis, the x-coordinate for any point is going to be a 0. So this is going to be 0. And let's say its y-coordinate is equal to y. Our objective is finding out this value of y. Once we know that, we can say, hey, 0, 3.2, 0, 5.7, 0, 9.2. We'll be able to come up with one such number. right? So essentially, we have to find out the distance of a y, square it, equate it to the distance of a g y. Let's find out the coordinates of A first. Coordinates of A, x coordinate is minus 2, y coordinate is plus 2. So coordinates of A are minus 2, comma, plus 2. Minus 2, comma, plus 2. Let's not make any mistake in writing this. Coordinates of point G are essentially minus 4 on the x-axis and 7 on the y-axis. Minus 4, comma, 7 are the coordinates, x and y coordinates are of point G. G y square, therefore, if y coordinate, the coordinates of point y, we said is equal to 0 comma y. So essentially, g y square is square root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. So this is minus 4 minus 0 the whole square plus 7 minus y the whole square, right? This is equal to a y, which is again x2 minus x1. We'll take this as x2 y2 x1 y1 minus 2 minus 0 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 is 2 minus y the whole square. Square this, minus 4 square is a 16. Expand this term, a square plus b square minus 2ab, 49 plus y square minus 14y, minus 2 square is a 4, plus 4 plus y square minus 4y, right? So this is what we have. y square on both sides get cancelled. We have an 8 here. Take it to the left hand side. So we'll have 16 minus 8 becoming 8, 8 plus 49 is equal to 57, minus 14y goes to the right hand side, plus 14y minus 4y is equal to a 10y, 10y equals 57 or the value of y is equal to 5.7. So the coordinates of point y are basically 0, 5.7. This is the point on the y axis that's equidistant from both A and G. What is the area of trapezium? A, F, G, H. Okay. So let's join this, get the, this is... AF, GH, they are parallel, the non-parallel sides. The area of this trapezium is what we are trying to find out. Area of the trapezium is equal to sum of the parallel sides, which is AF plus GH divided by 2 into the height. Height is basically the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides. We'll call it a small h, lowercase h. Right. So now what is left is to find out the length of AF. This line is parallel to the y-axis. So essentially, the x-coordinate is going to be the same for both points A and F. Similarly, the x-coordinate of points G and H will be same. So if we find out the difference in the y-coordinates, we have found out the length of AF and we have found out the length of GH. Right? Let's find out the coordinates of A first. A coordinates are minus 2, comma 2. I remember, so I'm writing it quickly. For the case of F, it's going to be the same minus F, whereas it is 9. So F is equal to minus 2, comma 9. So the value of AF is going to be equal to 9 minus 2, which is 7. This is equal to 7 units. Quickly run through G. G, the coordinates, x coordinate is equal to minus 4, comma 7, minus 4, comma 7. And the coordinates of point H are basically the same, minus 4 and 4. X coordinate will be same for A and F. X coordinate will be same for G and H. Therefore, the distance GH 
is equal to 7 minus 4 which is equal to 3. Only thing left to be found out is the height. Height, look at it, essentially this height is this, well, draw this line, this line is parallel to the x axis, therefore its y coordinate is going to be the same anywhere you look at it, here it will be a 6, here it will be a 5, so we need to find out the difference in the x coordinates which is minus 4, minus 2, so this is equal to 2 units, height is equal to 2 units, plug all of that here, area is equal to AF which is 7 plus GH which is 3 divided by 2 into the height which is equal to 2, 2 gets cancelled with 2 to leave us with 10 square units as the area of this trapezium. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. One, sign up at online.maxitude.com to get started with CBC Class 10 Math Online Tuitions. It takes all of 5 minutes and less than 3 steps to get started. So get it done today. And second thing, I want you to subscribe to this channel if you already haven't and turn on notifications so that you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. And also, spread the word about this channel to your friends and classmates.